presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. No growl. Just me, Basil Chaffin, sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. <clears throat> We're looking at the Dow on this Wednesday, <clears throat> the 16th of August. The Dow is down 64 at 34,881. <clears throat> so I'll do this real quickly because we've been discussing this for quite some time. I use two moving averages as really important. Uh, it's, it's part of the package of all the different tools that I have. And this nine period moving average, when it goes green, it means that the price is very, whatever you're following is strong. When it goes pink, I can make it red, I make it pink because I don't want to interfere with the actual red bars, the down bars. <clears throat> it means that you've probably gone from a, a cell signal to a cell mode. That isn't always the case. But look at this, the Dow, today is the first time that it's gone into the pink. And the day is young, anything can happen, but so far that's what it is. All the others, S&P, look, here's the S&P. Oh, why does it keep slipping around like that? Come on. Tish, what did I just do? Um, here we go, let's get that back. If I can actually find it. Oh, there it is. One. Two of the you know, you see my background there. There you are <clears throat> look the, the, the Dow is down, the SP, the next, there's the SP pink for quite a few days, the QQQ NDX 100 trading vehicle pink for quite a few days. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. <clears throat> IWM. Pink for quite a few days. You can go gold. Gold's been down for quite some time. So this is really important um, in terms of just confirming what we've been looking at for some time. So let me just go through all the numbers here. Here's the Dow. I need to just get out of this. I'm not sure why. That showed up like that. And I want to go there. Okay, so what we're looking at is the Dow is down 76 at 34,870. Using this arch formation, you see, we started looking at this as a potential arch formation. As it, and it's so fascinating how prices do that. Look how each high, as it got to this fourth highest peak, peak D, look how each one was just a little bit higher, then a little bit higher. <clears throat> and if you look at the uh, technicals, that nine period moving average was really strong. If you look at the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, it was showing that that high that was made right there on the uh, first of um, first of August, that wasn't quite as high as it was on the previous high. The stochastic was really strong, but it actually started to weaken. And then this blue line was right at a very overbought level. And using this particular technique, using just two or three techniques uh, within the Chapman wave smorgasbord board of, of tools that we have. <clears throat> we actually went short right there on the 1st of August. But the reasoning was everything looks as if there was a short term high and that <clears throat> if there was a pullback because of the width of this nine period moving average over the 14, it would take quite some time. It wouldn't just be, look how, how much time it took, and then it didn't even turn pink when the, the 34,588 high was made on the 16th of June using this one, one indicator. And turned around, and it did it a one-to-one, -one, perfect one-to-one -to, -one to the upside uh, measured move from the 32,586 low of the 25th of May. We go to uh, less than, um, uh, just it's three weeks later, we go to the high of 34,588, pull back to the 30. Uh, 3,610 level, and then we scream up to 35,679. 
And look, even that, you remember that day, whatever day that was, it was the 8th, uh, let me just check what day it was. It was the 10th. On the 10th, we had that sudden, very sharp move to the upside. But even then, that nine period moving average was slowly diminishing the distance between the green nine and the 14 uh, period moving average. So now here's the thing. Finally, we've got this confirmation that the Dow has gone from a sell signal to an upgraded sell mode. That doesn't mean, oh my God, sell mode, now we're going to go down another 1,000, 2,000, It just tells you, it, desig it designates the tide, that now you're in this bigger tide, and now we'll see what happens. What's the, what the 50 period moving average is right there at 34,682. I said based on, uh, I show this to my subscribers every day, if I can actually find it, I did something crazy, yeah, here we go. Um, <clears throat> I said to subscribers to my opening call newsletter um, this morning. I, this is the, one of the charts we send out. This is the Dow Daily. On the left side, it just has moving averages of the Chapman Wave notation. The middle one has automated Chapman Wave resistance support lines and the 120-minute chart. Look how many support lines there were all the way to the 200 period moving average, which coincided with this red 34,894 uh, support level. And we are now trading at 34,791. We're under it. So that's the one thing that was really important in terms of how we can look at a rollover that can take time. Sometimes, look, the weekly chart hasn't even acknowledged a little dip. It's still extremely strong. So I've been saying for a while, it's the daily charts that we're looking at that are going to go from sell signal to sell mode. Let me just do the exact same thing on the others before we get to a break. Here we go, S&P, same thing, down below the 50-period the moving average. MACD is weak. The stochastic is flat at 13%. That's not very positive. And the unbalanced volume is not even getting to oversold level. And you've got the pink nine period moving under the 14. And all I can say is that that weekly chart is still strong, but finally the price has gone under the nine. It looks like it wants to test the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart, which is at right there, 43.90. So that's only about 19 points lower. And let's see what happens there. The monthly chart on the right, still very strong QQQ. Let me just do this quickly because we've got a lot to discuss. Um, peak D in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for that fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. Well, lo and behold, the 38, 387.98 on the, I think it was around about the 17th, 18th of July. There's the QQQ, NDX 100 starts tumbling down. And now it's got this very big, almost pyramid shape in the daily. The weekly chart hasn't even given, we have to wait for Friday's close. So far, hasn't even given a sell signal, and uh, the monthly chart is still looking very good. IWM, real quickly, the small caps, uh -uh, not good at all, down at 192 at 186.21, and the weekly chart had made a double. These double tops are unbelievable how prices get within one point and then turn down, even after months. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien, and the Dow's down 153, S&P's down 27. Be back in a month. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the market with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien and the Tom O'Brien Show. Just wanted to show you a couple of patterns we look at. Look how unimportant the 200 period exponential moving average was in the uh, 10 minutes e-mini chart. Look. Here it is, nothing, nothing. This is the orangey line right there. And all of a sudden, right there, it gets repelled, comes back, tries again, gets repelled, makes an arch formation. Let me just show you this for those of you who are new to my work. Uh, if I can just get that over there. There it is. So I, I look at three distinct patterns besides rectangle formations, but this is straight up, straight down. Cup formation, arch formation, straight line down to red. If it comes down and then it goes to just one peak or two peaks, peak A or B, I alphabetize them, and then fails and takes out that left side low. That can be really tough because it do a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Same thing with the inverted Y, the reverse Y. If it takes out the left side high with a straight line up and then a cup or a V-shaped pattern, it can go much higher. Well, lo and behold, what do we have? We have the arch formation. It took it out, then you got the arch formation again, and now we've really taken out almost a one to one to the downside. So this is a this is a tough situation right now for a number of reasons. And now I need to go through some of the other areas to explain what I'm looking at. <clears throat> if you get your major indices as a general, which is the Dow 30, was leading the pack, but you can't have the general leading without the troops, and the troops were saying <laughs> We're st we can't go. We're stuck. We're going the other way. So now the Dow has to join them. Is this the exact moment where the Dow pulls back and then the others say, oh, "Okay, let's have a let's have a decent try"? Well, that's going to be the issue, and I'll talk about that as we get into the close. But right now, what we're looking at, what are the factors that really could be worrying the uh, market? Well, the TLT just made a new multi-week low, the low of ninety-one point eighty-five, made back in October. I uh, saw so a rally all the way to 108, 109, somewhere in that area, made this arch formation, a double arch formation. We call it a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m in the Chapman Wave methodology. And it plunges down, and it's at 93.83 right now. So that's making upside action really tough to garner just traction. And you need to be able to find some level on the left side. We'll be getting close to a couple of points on the left side that says maybe, and let's do the inversion. This is the TBT. This is like a mirror image 
Well, this is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond fund ETF. And uh, in a strong leg E to the upside, there's the pattern we were just looking at that green. If I can just get that to move, there it is. That reverse Y. And we've gone above that left side high. This is a leg F in the weekly chart. I'll just do a very brief summary of what I'm looking at in terms of these notations. Uh, in, the, in the Chapman Wave methodology, let me just get that up there. Try to identify the lowest low bar, and then merely count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially, uppercase A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. You never get an H in this methodology. And at D, other things can happen. It can recycle, it can do all sorts of things. That's where you can have, look, the sharp has moved down. So what we're looking at here is that we've gone to an E. That also says that is this the area where there could be some resistance? If you look at the T and X, it's slightly different. That's the 10-year. If you look at the 10-year yield, if I can hit the right button right there, look at that. T and X dot X, there we go. You actually almost at the high of the left side that was back in October at 43.33, 4.33%. Where are we right now? We're at 42.58. Yesterday was slightly higher. Um, and this is going to be the issue. Does, if, or how do we deal with the left side high, monthly chart peak D? Does it break out? Does it go much higher? And that's, I think, the worry for the market. And that was one worry. Another worry is that crude oil, although it's pulling back right now, it's down to $1.78, that's big, <clears throat> has, in fact, done very well. And the market was kind of worried about that. It did impact, in some ways, the IYT. Let me just have a drink here. <clears throat> a little tea to soothe the throat, although the throat feels fine. Just this little frog. So the IYT, which is the transports, and you really want the transports to be in sync with the Dow. That's the Dow theory. And look at the big move down. In the weekly chart, it's not such a big deal. But it is saying that the, the short-term tide has turned down. The weekly tide is just on the cusp, but it hasn't yet turned down. I mean, it looks like it's down, but there are no indicators to tell me that it's got a concerted move. So this is very important. And if you look at the VIX index, that's the volatility index, the volatility index is holding very well at 16.77, but that's still way below the 18.38 200-period exponential moving average. Um, which would be a target if this was going to become an even more serious decline. So it's a possibility. Now, um, I always consider the semiconductors as the oil of the 21st century, just as, as crude oil was it just permeated many things, but it permeated almost every economic, um, economic factor that really resulted in our growth for the 1900s, the, the era of the 1900s. Um, so chips are the same thing. So about from 1980, I would say chips have become absolutely imperative. So the semiconductor index almost always guides to the way up and guides the way down and uh, kind of leads most of the time. I'd say almost all the time. And the semiconductor, look at this, down 2.22 uh, at 146.61. Look at pink, it turned pink. It, the MACD is weak. The on balance volume has turned sharply low. It's getting a little bit oversold, but it isn't quite there yet. The stochastic's way down under 20%. Uh, it's at 19.64%, under 20 <clears throat> And uh, just for disclosure purposes, I should say that subscribers to my opening call, we actually went short uh, two days after the high of 161.17 in the 159 area. Um, and we were kind of aggressive because we also got the three times short position. Um, I, was, I was asked questions about it this morning in my show, the Tiger Traditions Hour, 10 o'clock. Actually, let me just uh, do this right now. I'm going to go to, if I've still got it up, I'll try to find it. Yeah, I'll get to it in a moment. So um, these, not just the moving average, but the arch formation, these are all techniques that I love to use, and it's really important that in the guidance of what we're looking at in terms of the market, the velocity, that is the torque, the, the 
ictus, the, the start of a turnaround up or down. What you want to see is tremendous follow through. Well, this red candle in the semiconductors, I would call that certainly huge follow through. And that follow through basically is saying um, within all the different aspects that we look at here, um, that, that velocity, that torque gives the MACD momentum. So on the way up, we like to look at the torque of the stochastic leading to the MACD and the nine period moving average. And yeah, we've got all of these things going to the downside. So this is a really important moment. And the weekly chart is still saying, what are you getting excited about? I'm just taking a bit of a breather. At this point, that's what I think it is. We'll be back. Basil Chapman, 70 for Tom O'Brien. Dow's down 173. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So just to repeat, the volatility index, the VIX index, that's kind of the... the, the um, the fear gauge, let's just say, is up only 36 cents, up 2% at 16.82. And that just says that there's a market sell-off that's unfolding and so far hasn't quite been recognized by the volatility index. That's the reason why I'm talking about that 18 area. If, in fact, we get to the 18 area in the next couple of days and it holds it on a closing basis, that's going to be important. That's just saying that all of a sudden, fund managers are buying insurance. Okay, so let's get that out the way. 
The other thing that we're looking at here <clears throat> is gold. If you look at gold, in just, in, just in terms of action, price action, there's that pattern, that H pattern that we were looking at in the weekly. So it's cl it looks like this week it might, we don't know yet. The low of 1940, uh, 1940 that was in the continuous contract uh, June, the week of last week of June. Uh, we're under that at 1923 right now. In this methodology, we've got two bars, maybe three, but I usually like to think just two bars in which to close above that. And that's going to be important. Why? Because look, in the TLT, we're above 91.85, but I'd use the same methodology right here for these arch formations, making 98.88 really important uh, support in the weekly chart. And here it is. This is the, uh, it went under it the week of, this is bonds, right? Uh, the week of uh, the 14th of July, 98.85. Then it ran very nicely higher, had another higher low than the one that we were talking about. And then, Three weeks ago, it plunged under it and had followed through red candles. Well, the week is young, the weekly chart, you don't want to talk about it as if it's done, but it's got two days to go, so it's not looking very good. And that's the same methodology at 91.85. If it closes under that for two out of three weeks, closes under that, that just says those yields are going to break out. The market doesn't, will not like that. So just when I said, I think that we, we are, Based on all the, the look, the TLT, this the this is the on balance volume. To me, it's getting really close to at least a bounce. That's a, just a bounce, just an oversold. I only use oversold and overbought with this on balance volume. Oh, by the way, I'll be doing um, an opening call subscriber webinar on Wednesday, August the 23rd, a week from today at four o'clock. In fact, exactly a week from today, four to five thirty, 90 minutes. Uh, the power of the 914 moving average and other indicators in the Chapman Wave methodology. So it's a live subscriber webinar. Um, and uh, so within that are how to use the 914 moving averages to assess sustaining power, how to use the on balance volume uh, for poten potential price. That's what we used for the uh, turnaround in, in the Dow right at the top on August the 1st. Um, it's actually what we also used for the low that we still long from October. And actually, from the March low in the Dow of 2020, using this, these techniques. So I just wanted to go through that. Many other things. I'll talk about that. We'll have time to do that. But most importantly, what I am looking at here is <clears throat> look uh, the power of the nine period moving average. Look at this. The nine was pink all the way in the one minute chart of the E mini right there at uh, at 2:43 uh, this afternoon Eastern time. Um, at 40, 44, sorry, 4,448 in the uh, uh, E-mini. And it's come all the way down here to 4424. And look, it just turned green. So that's not a timing tool, but it's a confirmation. And yet we haven't, I have to wait for the entire one minute bar because this L can just disappear in a second. And look at the weekly chart. Even with that big rally, once it turned pink, right over there and that was this morning at about uh, on the 16th at at uh, 12 o'clock is that yeah 12 o'clock um once it turned pink even that big rally to what i call the eiffel tower single leg a failure pattern looks like an eiffel tower straight up and straight down um it's still pink so that's the power it's one of the technical tools that we'll be using um okay with that said let's go to the um GDX, and that was the question really. In the GDX, where would you start a position? For the last couple of days, I've been asked that question. I said, I just don't see it yet. And you can see the on balance volume itself is also not even in the oversold area. Stochastic is at 12%. MACD is lousy. The pink nine period moving average is way under the 14. And the weekly chart is not very. So I'm just, I don't see anything in gold just yet. And let's go to the dollar. So the dollar is at the 200 period moving average resistance. It's stalled there, but actually this is the, it's had a nice little bounce gain the last hours at 103.45, up 20, I should mention, we actually long the dollar from 2018 at 90.07, rode it all the way up, took a little bit off on the way, still have the core position, uh, saw it go to 120, where did they go? We saw it go to, uh, so this is 18 from there. 
long right there. So it go to 103, and then it pulled back to 89, 281. We used the UUP, and that stop held, so we still have it. It went all the way to 100, and this gets smoothed out. Okay, it went all the way. It went all the way to uh, in September of 22. It went to 114.74, and now it's kind of in this sideways range in the monthly chart. But in the very short term. This is good action. This is very good action because it's a V-shaped pattern. But look at the weekly. The weekly says it is good, but it's just stuck in a range. And that says go to the EUR USD, the Euro Dollar Currency pair, and look at look what we've got. Um, we've got a peak D. That's the fourth highest peak. It pulls back from the 1.12s. It goes all the way down, and it's still very weak. So this is going to be absolutely imperative to hold the low of the E. 6th of July at 1.083. And you've got a peak D in the weekly chart, and that says, oh, you've got to be a little careful here because that nine period is very close to turning down. And if you use the USDJPY to confirm any rally in the uh, <clears throat> to confirm any rally in the dollar, when we were over here, I was saying in the Chapway methodology, with this strength, we should see a move above that D to try to get to that high that was made right back there in the uh, in the yen at 145.06. So here it is. This is the leg E up, up, up and away. And it's at 146.33. So and it's in leg D. That's the objective in the channel is to go from a buy signal, upgrade, see it upgraded to a buy mode. And the implication is it should go to at least four higher peaks. And here it is. Does this uh, say 150 is in the cards? I just can't say right now because everything's very strong. But I don't have an indication on the upside yet because it needs to take out on a closing basis this really ugly candle with a high of 147.56. Uh, and that was the candle of the week of the... Uh, November, the week of uh, the 11th of November of 2022. If it does that, then I'm going to say, yep, it can go all the way there. <clears throat> so within that context, a couple of questions that I had a little earlier, I'll do them again. Um, the question was jets. Oh, I, I didn't do this this morning. Jets is the U.S. Global Jets ETF. Look at that peak E at 22, around about 22.50, and it's at 19.65, getting close to the 19.45, 200 period moving average. This is the global jets, and has anybody caught a plane lately? Uh, they are packed. What's happening? I'll be back. Basil Chapman, the total grind does down 150. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Uh, so the question about the USO, that's the United States Oil Fund uh, trading down $1.20 at $71.42. This, of course, uh, that matches the, the oil uh, contract. It's it's okay. It's doing well. It's done it really, and I think that was the big surprise that it went from about the 57 uh, area up into the 75. I mean, percentage-wise, that's huge, right? But at the same time, now it's got a really important digestive phase. How it holds is going to be important. Now I think we've got the momentum of the selling. Now you don't actually need all these other accoutrements. Uh, it's just now we're going to get to an oversold condition where – People start throwing out really good stocks. And now just while we're talking about that, let me do this. Have I forgotten anything that I needed to do? I did the TLT. I did that. Yes. So here we go. Amazon. So Amazon is down down 2.22 uh, at 135.46. It had this sudden spike to this, almost like what I call a Chapman Wave, Rogue Wave. But it, it has just a couple of the characteristics. But it's starting to fill the gap. So at 136, it's really important the 128 level, let's go 132 to 128, the 9 and 14 period moving averages in the weekly chart, that's going to tell us to get the 9 to go negative in the weekly chart, Apple will have to trade under 120. That's 15 points. There's another 12% from it. It can do it. I'm just saying that that's what it would need to do. And even the daily chart hasn't get, given a single uh, um, in the nine period moving, it hasn't given anything. But the MACD is just about to turn negative. It hasn't yet. Stochastic's now down under 80 at 71 in the daily chart. And as I say, the weekly charts, so look at this, 145.57 was the high in 2022. And that was in, I think it was August, a year ago, exactly a year ago, 8.18, 8.19, the week of the 19th of August, <clears throat> it hit 142.80. Wait, well, why is that 145? Oh, hi, 146.57, 146, point, not 145. And what was the most recent high? I, I mean, how the market does it, how, how the market has a memory. Of course, it's not the market, it's us. Uh, it goes to 143.63. Let me type that in. 143.63. Within less than two points, after over a year, oh, is that over a year? Exactly a year. It goes all the way down to 80 and then comes back and it stops dead right here. Isn't that the way horizontal levels are memorized very well? What actually fascinates me, and I don't have a chart right now in front of me that I, I, well, I suppose I could look at this. Look at the way trend lines are so. This is a Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. So I'm just going to take it and I'll show you something fascinating. Look at these trend lines. This one, I'm sorry, look at these price points. Look how they stop dead within pennies of that resistance level. I, I mean, how does Marcus know horizontal? I mean, how, diagonal. I understand horizontal because you know what the low was, you know what the highest. But to know the measured move to get each one of those is fabulous. Ah, the market, isn't that a, what, a, what an interesting uh, vehicle it is and, and uh, an instrument instrument of, it's like, you know, it's like trying to play a Stradivarius here. So as I say, live subscriber webinar, I did, what I did mention is that 
Um, it'll be archived. And if you sign up, you get a 30-day risk-free trial for Basil's opening call today. Um, it's starting immediately. And this is a really important time because we are putting on trades. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of the market in terms of it depends on what you go for the long side. We've got uh, one new long that's doing very nicely and one would be started today that I should have started a little on a we we got the pullback, but it sh I should have waited for a deeper pullback. So maybe we'll get stopped out of it. It's it's a four dollar stock. I want in this phase to have nice, very low price stocks that can give. You, you we have very tight stops, but if they work, they give really good gains. That's not as good as the three times shorts were, <laughs> which are all working so fabulously for those people who have any of them um, at this particular point. Okay, so the another question came in that I really need to get to. I'm just looking around to see if I can say, um, yes, I just want, I didn't finish that off to say that the monthly chart of the oil, <clears throat> the, it's, it is above the nine, the nine period moving average is good. It's above the nine period moving average. The MACD hasn't crossed positive. The casting's very weak at 25 on balance volumes a week. I, I think crude oil is going to stall at some point very soon. It could even be now. Um, and it will come back on fire, oh, I shouldn't say that. It should be come back as a as a, a leading I index in the in the in the um, in the oil and heating oil. Let's see what heating oil is going to be doing at this point. Heating oil is pulling back a little bit. Is actually holding much better than crude oil. Look at those monthly uh, triple top right here. <clears throat> but we can't talk about it as a top. But I'm saying it's getting into that range. <clears throat> so heating oil at 3.02, <clears throat> not bad. It is a leg C. In the uh, Chapman Wave weekly chart, and it should go to a D because it's in a buy mode. Ninety-three percent stochastic. MACD is good. On balance volume is a little overbought. Nine's way over the fourteen, and the price is way over the nine in the weekly. So this should go higher. Heating on, and of course it's the season. Then I had a question about natural gas. Natural gas has just been ah uh, a terrible vehicle. Um, I thought that there was a good chance <clears throat> on that big spike. That it was raising the support level, looking out, going into September, maybe October, that I was starting to see signs of technical improvement in the weekly. But price is price. And this move down to 259 right now says <clears throat> it's just back in the same old, same old. It has this big cup formation right there. And it went to a higher high. And now you've got a second chance of a cup formation, but the 2.50 level. That has to hold on any pullback. So yes, natural gas. Looking out, the week the, the weekly chart is just in this long, elongated, narrow, a rectangle formation. Not in one of my favorite patterns, unless you recognize that in a rectangle formation, if it goes above the resistance at the top, it can come back and test the low and sometimes break it, and then you can get the big move to the upside. So let's just watch this. And that, I don't have any opinion right now on uh, natural gas short term. Longer term, I do see an, an improvement. That doesn't mean to say that it's going to soar to the upside. It just says there's a technical improvement. Uh, one other thing I wanted to do is, I did that, I did that, I did that. Um, oh, XLP. XLP. So this is where money usually goes to. It usually goes to the um, S&P Select Consumer Staples Spider Fund when the market gets nervous. But I was pointing this out the other day. That peak D, the fourth highest peak, that's where other things can happen. Right there um, on the, was that the 1st of August? No, the 28th of July at 76.40. Needed to hold the nine period, the 200 period moving average of 74.23. Two days now is below it. And it's got this H pattern in the weekly chart after a doji peak D. Ooh, this is not good. So that just says... Um, 72, it's at 73.47. On a weekly basis, if it closes under 42, uh, 72, the S&P Select Consumer Staples Spider XLP, that's just not a good sign at all. Another question came in about FXI, that's the China large cap. Testing the left side low of July at 26.68, also doesn't look very good. Uh, Basil Trapper sitting for Tom O'Brien. My service is the opening call day newsletter at the time. It's editions hour at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Dow's down 160. We'll be up there.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. For this last segment, uh, I'm Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we're looking at the Dow down 160. So let me just show you something. So what I've been discussing from subscribers to my opening call is that the other indices have really taken quite a beating in their daily charts. The weekly charts are still really good. So if the Dow, which is the last, it did it today, if this is the last one to see the nine period moving average flip negative pink underneath the uh, uh, 14 period moving average, then I have to say, okay, now assess to see whether or not we've, we've seen this before. Let me just quickly show this chart here. This is the S&P. Look what happened here in the S&P for a day. The Qs did the same thing. Look, ever since the low that was made back in uh, when, the, when, the, when it turned green back in 28th of March, this has been green all the way except for one little day that could have taken you out right there on the 5th of May. And then it flipped back. Within a day, it was back to green. And it's been green ever since um, the S&P until the uh, uh, 8th of August. So sometimes you have to wait to see. So it depends on the distance. And this, these are things I'm going to be discussing in the webinar I've got a week from today for Chapman Wave subscribers, uh, the opening call subscribers. The distance between the, the 9 and the 14, when it does turn pink, tomorrow it will show pink, is going to be the clue. If it's very narrow, it's going to say there's still some support. So be careful. You can still have a rally. If it starts to widen, 
And we might see selling pressure all the way into Friday, and then Monday we might get a low. We might get a really decent trading low. I'm not sure because those – let me just show you once again as we're wrapping up here. The um, Look at this. The S&P, which was stronger than the QQQ, has now turned down very sharply. It's going right into this whole area, this consolidating area of the 44.02 to 43.90. And the QQQ is even deeper. But look at the look at the nine period moving air, which is saying we're really close to at least a bounce. So keep in mind, the tide has turned on the daily charts to a more serious down mode, sell mode. Now we're looking to see where support. Have a great rest of the day. Uh, stay, uh, 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 oh, we're wrapping it up.